We are live. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday, or perhaps Monday, morning or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Joining in today, I know last week we had some people from, I believe someone from South Africa was in here. Um, I know I had someone just comment that they, on the poll of the week this week, they live in New Zealand. So we've got people from all over. So it's Sunday morning here where I live in um, Dallas, Texas, but good morning, good day, good afternoon to everybody. Um, this hour goes by so fast and I'm really excited for today's conversation and I have a lot of thoughts and got some great input from all of you this week via the poll of the week and then also my most recent upload which was my 30-day experience on the lion diet and I got done reading a bunch of your comments this morning and I think a lot of some things that you guys said and the more I've been thinking about how I'm doing and what I'm going to be doing moving forward applies to today's topic. So I'm excited to talk about it today. And let's see, Linda is here. Hi, Nia. May I strongly suggest getting healing scriptures to confess and pray in faith? It's powerful. Thank you. Yes. Um, I do. I, I wouldn't say I do that technically, but I, I definitely believe in speaking out loud what you want and and affirming the things that you want to see more of and experience in your life. And so I think um, <clears throat> whether it comes directly from, from the Bible or scripture or some people use affirmations, things like that, that's um, definitely a common theme across a lot of different healing modalities and, and religions, I would say is that act of confessing or speaking out loud what it is that that you believe and what you want. So that's great. Thank you. If you have any suggestions for specific scriptures, you can leave them in the comments for me. Uh, Miss E is here. Hello from Austin. Hello. Another Texan. I'm excited for KetoCon this year. And I'm glad it's in Austin because that's close enough for me to not have to fly or anything. So um, are you going to be there this year? Let me know. Derek Dean's here. Good morning. Good morning. And there you are, Carnivore Keith, new sub from New Zealand. Yes, I just saw your comment this morning on the poll and it made me tear up. So we're going to read that today. <clears throat> what time is it for you right now? Is, is it like 12 hours ahead or, or more than that. My dust store is here. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see all of you <laughs> today. Susanna Taylor. Hi from Southwest Austin. Ooh, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to try to put together some kind of meetup. I think I mentioned this last week too, but um, there's so many of us here in Texas and I know it's kind of hard to pick a spot that's convenient for everybody, but that would be fun, huh? Cardboard Keith. Okay. So I'm going to kind of just jump right in today to the poll of the week. And I asked you guys, um, how important are other lifestyle factors besides diet when it comes to your healing journey? So I know a lot of us have been through the ringer essentially and had to try a bunch of different things to finally either lose weight or recover from, <clears throat> um, you know, all different kinds of things. Myself coming from a background of chronic IBS, digestive problems, it took me years and years and years to kind of whittle my way down to what worked for me, which was the carnivore diet. But there are a lot of other things since I figured out my nutrition that I was able to start stacking on top, mainly over the last six months now that I've been carnivore and then with one month of that almost pure lion and you have to see my update video for context and details there but I've noticed that the further I get into this way of eating the easier it is for me to start managing some of these other excuse me lifestyle factors that just start to compound the healing benefits and we all know diet's so powerful we've all experienced that to some degree but sometimes just changing your diet isn't enough. Sometimes there are other things in our environments, in our 
um, schedules, relationships, work, all kinds of other things that impact our health truly in a fundamental sense. And so it's it's kind of overwhelming to try to tackle all those things at once. And I think, especially kind of in the beginning of the year, if we if we set New Year's goals or, or resolutions for the new year, a lot of times we try to do, we look at all the areas of our life and we're like, okay, I'm going to change my eating. I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to reduce my stress. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And we kind of stack a bunch of stuff up. At least that's what I've done in the past. Like I'm going to change everything all at once and it's too much. And so I think to kind of start out the conversation, like focusing on diet and nutrition and getting that in a, into a place where you feel like it's working for you, working for your lifestyle, and you're seeing health improvements is the first step, at least in my opinion. I think that is something that makes a dramatic difference and such a noticeable difference that it makes you, it encourages and incentivizes you to want to do more things to kind of compound that healing. And so that's what I was kind of curious to hear from you guys this week about what else you have found important in your lifestyle that has impacted your health in a positive way. And so um, I listed out several things and this isn't everything that that could possibly be a factor here, but some of the common ones like reducing stress, getting more vitamin D or sun exposure, adding in movement or fitness, removing alcohol, tobacco or stimulants, some of these addictive things that we um, hold on to sometimes practicing introspection, meditation, or prayer, self-reflection, self something like that, spending more time in nature or grounding, which is a cool topic that we should talk about maybe in a separate video sometime, um, and then joining a community of like-minded people. So those are just all things that I have experimented with myself <clears throat> and found that they definitely impact my health. But I tried to do a lot of these things in the past, and when my nutrition wasn't dialed in, I would, I just seemed to lose motivation for it really quick. I would feel like, oh, this isn't really working. And so I would back off and I would usually try to do too many things at once, too many changes. And then it, it just was too hard to manage all of that. And so I'm curious to hear your thoughts too about how you kind of start to stack these up. But you had three choices to choose from for the poll. And so how important were all these things? The first one was not very important. Diet really did it all. So maybe you just change your nutrition and kind of everything worked itself out and now you feel great. You don't really have to change many other things. The second choice was somewhat, um, noting that you've changed a few other things in your life. And then the last one was very important. You've changed several or more other habits in your lifestyle. And the over, we got 220 votes this week. So that's awesome. And the vast majority, 73%, voted for the third option, which was very important, saying you've changed several or more other habits. And then 21% for in the middle and 6% for really it was just diet. So I thought that was really interesting because I am in that third category as well. I feel like um, the more I do this, the easier it is to start making changes in other areas of my life. So... We're going to get to your comments here. Let's see who else is here. Marvin Malley's here from East Texas. Go Carnivore for life. Good morning. Darren Earp's here. Good morning, all. Good morning. Thanks for being in here. And Linda, I think you were at the top, right? Good morning. Awesome. Okay. So we had a few comments here. Um, the first one from, let's see if I can pronounce this, Zayuk, Zayuk GD843 says, uh, I think you meant love this, working on reducing stress and getting more into the sun helps me immensely. Yes, those have probably been my top two things that I've worked with since I went carnivore again this time was I was getting a lot of sun this summer and... <clears throat> I uh, really enjoyed doing that. That that actually started putting me on into the state of realizing like this is such a stress relieving activity just to go and lay in the sun and how good that feels that I realized, wow, I need more of that stress reduction type stuff in my life. And so really for me, it was sun first. I've always known that 
I need sun and having, you know, that uh, problem with psoriasis in the past and stuff, I have always known that that has a big impact on my skin. And so, you know, I don't ever want to burn or anything, but I do like to be out in the sun quite a bit. And so that's kind of what I started adding on with my nutrition changes right away this late this summer when I started carnivore again. And yeah, it definitely has a big impact. And I miss the sun so much right now. And it's not even that bad of a winter in Texas, you know what I mean? But, um, and it was nice to have a relief from the heat. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm ready for sun weather again because it feels so good. And I feel like it, re it makes me feel less stressed. It just makes me feel relaxed and peaceful and just good. You know, it's like it, it raises your vibration. Ketogenic woman. Good morning. Hey, Anita, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Linda says, been 100% clean carnivore since Christmas. Lost 12 pounds, but have stalled. Suggestions. Well, um, what is your goal? What is your, do you have a goal weight that you're trying to get to? I know um, weight loss is not my technical specialty. I didn't really come from being very much overweight. So I've fluctuated weight probably maybe 20 pounds or so in one direction or the other over my life. But I, um, I know that usually when you start out, at least from um, other experiences I've heard people talk about, they, in the beginning, it's easy if you have quite a bit of weight to lose, it'll come off really fast. And then usually the closer you get to your goal weight, what's a healthy weight for your body, it slows down and sometimes you have stalls. And that's sort of just to kind of parallel over to what I'm experiencing now, not from a weight loss perspective, but, but from a skin hormonal balancing healing perspective, I come across stalls as well. Like I kind of felt like in January, I thought, oh, I'm on a lion diet, 30 days, everything's just going to get so much better. And it did get a little bit better. I talked about energy in my last update video, how, how that did improve and removing stimulants and caffeine really did help. But my skin didn't really improve that much. And so it's, I know stalls are not fun, whether it's it's weight or anything else you're working with. And so what I have learned, and I guess the best advice I could give is to find a way to, um, I don't want to use the word track because that implies almost sort of like scrutinizing things, but find a way to keep track of what you're doing and then start looking at these other lifestyle factors too, because stress can, like chronic stress can cause um, cortisol to go up and then that's going to affect your weight loss progress, right? Or your, or stress for me will trigger a skin flare up a lot of times. I know it's kind of dark in here. Is it kind of dark? I feel like, or maybe my screen's just turned down, but anyway, I feel like it's really, really gray. Um, but I would just keep, keep going. Um, and I've just learned to get very intuitive with this stuff. And like now this month I'm tracking my macros because I kind of assumed that I was eating high enough fat before, but I'm only now what, five, four days in. And I noticed I probably was not eating 80, 20 fat. I probably had a lot higher protein than maybe what's good for me. And so if you haven't started tracking anything, I would, and, and you don't think it'll trigger you too much from like a restriction and, and binging type thing, um, that could give you some valuable information as to what to do next. And so I'm scrolling down here to see, it looks like he says you need to lose 15 more pounds. Yeah. So it could just be that you're getting really close and, you know, again, I don't know your, um, history as far as exercise or anything like that, but sometimes adding in some a little bit of resistance training helps or just doing more movement from like a walking, um, like doing more walking or something like that, just to get things moving, keep the blood flowing, just keep doing. Sorry, honey, it's go find your mama, okay? Mama's live, okay? You've got to go hang out with your daddy. Okay, go ask your daddy, honey. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I don't, again, I don't have a ton of experience with that, but I hope that helps because it's hard when you, when you feel like you were doing great and then it, it kind of slows down and, and I've definitely been there from a healing perspective too. So 
um, just keep doing what you're doing and possibly use whatever methods are comfortable for you to gather more data and see if you if there if anything pops up to you that you might want to tweak. So um, thank you for that question. Okay, I'll get back into the poll comments here, but I want to grab some of your questions here. Oh, I skipped one. Carnival Keith says, I stopped wearing sunglasses and wake up most mornings between 5 and 6 a.m. It's summertime here. Okay. I, um, it's funny. I just watched, I think it was um, uh, Dr. Lisa Weideman, Weideman, the carnivore doctor on vitamin D. And she talked about sunglasses and how, you know, she wears them in the car and stuff because of the glare and the reflection and all that stuff. But that when we're chronically wearing sunglasses, that isn't necessarily great for our eyes. And um, so I find that really interesting. I've been waking up super early this month, like 3 a.m. every day this week. <laughs> so I don't know what's up with that. But I've always worn sunglasses quite a bit just because my eyes have been super, super sensitive. I have had like uh, dry eye for many years. And that is getting better, but I I have like very low tolerance. I go out in the bright sunny day and I'm like, I can't see, I have to squint so hard. So I feel like I probably wear them too much, but that's interesting. I'm, I've actually switched to a, a lighter pair or a pair that's less darkening. So maybe I'll wean myself down from that, but that's interesting. Um, Hallie Cherry says, good morning. I'm new here. Wondering if eating meat and fruit is okay for healing because doing only meat is not easy for me. Well, I feel like, uh, that's a loaded question. There's a lot of different opinions on that. There are, there's sort of camp anti fructose, which, um, so, you know, there are some papers that talk about high amounts of fructose consumption, which is the sugar in fruit and how that's bad for the liver. So there's kind of one camp that says fruit in in large quantities, if you were eating, you know, cups of it a day or something like that is is not great for healing. Um, and then there's sort of the other side, like the um, oh gosh, what's its name? Paul Saladino, who went from carnivore back to eating, I think he eats like something like 200 grams of fruit or sugar carbohydrates a day, something like that. But he's extremely active. He's in the sun all the time. He surfs a couple hours a day. He's like barefoot and on the ground all the time. So, you know, that's that's really, I feel like an individual thing. Some people in, in the comments here say that they do include fruit and that they feel fine. And other people say they can't have it at all. And it triggers them to want to binge on other things. Any sweet taste that they get kind of just sends them back into that. Oh, now I want this too. Or now I can't stop with the fruit. And then it kind of throws off their progress. And so I would say that it depends depending on your background, your history with dieting, your history with health and what, you know, what you feel like your body's really asking for. I personally don't eat any fruit right now because I'm sort of in that camp of like, if I eat something sweet, it's, it starts to turn on that oh, well, you need to restrict and then I want to binge on something. And so it, at least at this point, it's something that I don't include for that reason. And I'm really trying to hit that higher grade of ketosis, like a, a higher, what am I saying? Like a much higher fat ratio to try to heal some of this inflammation. So, you know, context matters here and Again, you can try 30 days with some fruit and you can try 30 days without. You could do 60 days with and 60 days without and just see what happens. Um, I would say, you know, only eating meat isn't easy at first, um, probably for most of us because we, you know, sweet things taste good. And most of us are used to consuming a lot of things that taste sweet. And so going to that meat you know, only diet can, it can take a while for your taste buds and your, you know, cravings to adjust. But, um, I know for me now, I don't have any cravings for sugar. I actually crave, I was talking about this with somebody in the comments this morning. Um, I crave healthy food now. Like I was craving seafood and I crave eating like a delicious burger patty now. And I'm starting to crave tallow and just like enjoying eating all of that. And so, um, 
if if you're just kind of struggling with the only meat thing, um, just know that it can change over time and it will get easier if that's something you want to pursue. So, okay. Thank you for that question. Cause that's, yeah, it depends on who you ask, I guess what, um, what they think. I know, um, Dr. Chafee has a, like a friendly debate with Paul Saladino on his channel and it's probably on Paul's channel as well. And then I know, um, Ken Berry and, and Paul Saladino have talked on, you know, together too about this topic. So those might be some videos to check out if you want more info. Uh, Miss E says, I started grounding, getting sunshine and doing an active meditation practice called Qigong. I think they have made a difference. Even if it's placebo, if it helps, it helps. I love this. Um, yeah, Ben, my fiance, he's a certified Qigong instructor. So I'm very familiar with that. Um, I did, I did, he like did these little kind of in-home classes with some of our friends while I was pregnant. And I did a lot of that while I was pregnant and that really helped. Um, and so yes, anything like that, uh, Qigong yoga, any kind of mind body physical practice, I think is so, so important. And even if it is placebo, right, if, if it works, it works, right? So, and it's not hurting you, you know, to take that time to relax and to reflect and to get in touch with your body. And I've found doing stuff like that, again, compounds this ability to really know what is right. And kind of going back to Hallie's question about the um, fruit, it's like, if I had a question like that, like, well, should I be including this food or should I cut it out? There's there's part of you that is like, and I'm not saying this is you, Hallie Cherry, but like for me, like coffee was an example where it's like I was addicted to the coffee, you know, and I didn't really want to admit it. And so when I would ask myself, you know, do I think coffee is really causing me problems? Should I try cutting it out? There'd be half of me that was like, no, it's fine. You know, caffeine's what you need. You need to, you know, you got to get through the day, blah, blah, blah. But then there was this little voice on the other shoulder that was like, you know, caffeine is not great for you and it's a stimulant and it's doing, it has this cascade effect on all these other hormonal, you know, um, the balancing of the hormones in the body. And so it definitely could be a problem. And so doing things like this, like what you're talking about, just getting out in the sun, just laying there and absorbing that energy, grounding, which um, I'm trying to do with my daughter now more when we go to the park, we take our shoes off and run around in the field or the grass or something like that. Um, before we go to the playground. So it's like we're getting some contact, direct contact with the soil. Um, and then doing any kind of qigong, tai chi, yoga, meditation, <clears throat> things like that. It just helps open up that space for you to recognize the difference between the addictive voice in your in your mind and the the true the truth the intuition that you probably need to follow, and so there again that's why I think this topic is so cool and this is great Miss E that you're talking about all these things that you've added in because they all connect right and they all feed off each other and the more things we add the more things the the better we can just understand and know what to do uh, moving forward so very cool. Ketogenic Woman says, working on my sleep and stress levels these days. What we eat and don't eat goes a long way, but these other things are also important. Yes, I completely agree. I um, just talked about in my 30-day update from Lion how my sleep is still a little bit dysregulated, and it's. I think some of it has to do with now, like perhaps the level of ketosis I'm in. I'm waking up super early but I feel more energized. I get tired in the afternoon, evening, and I feel like I need to go to bed like at 8.30 or 9. Um, but, you know, like something like sleep isn't just diet related, right? It's how much tech we're using, how much stress we might have had that day, like you're saying, um, days or weeks where you have a higher stress, stressful stuff going on in your life, it makes it much harder to sleep. And so all those things are connected. And when you start looking at okay, well, like in my case, my sleep isn't exactly where I would want it to be yet. I've pretty much dialed in my nutrition at this point. So what are the other things that could be affecting my sleep? Is it my the way I'm scheduling my day? Am I kind of 
which is true sometimes for me. I'm like rushing around at the end of the evening to get some things done that maybe I didn't organize or plan enough so that I could be done at a decent time and then feel good about going to bed. Because sometimes if I leave things undone, then I lay in bed if I'm on time, but I'm still going, oh, I should have, you know, cleaned off that table or I forgot to switch the laundry or something, you know, something like that. And so that's, you know, organization and, and planning your day and time management could even be a lifestyle factor that affects sleep and stress. And so, yeah, that's great. It's, it's just a continuous iteration of tweaking things until you really get into a rhythm and you feel like all these areas are where you want them to be. <clears throat> Bethy, Bethy P says, same, I thought it was just stress but I only get around five or six hours of sleep. I've been carnivore for a month. Okay, I'm guessing you're not happy with the five or six hours. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's weird because I was coming from being so completely dead tired that I could, like even if I got 10 hours of sleep, I was just a zombie. Like I could not, you know, live without caffeine, but then the caffeine was still crap. I was crashing off of that. And it was just, it was just not, not cool, but I'm starting to feel really good on like five or six hours right now. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, for, for 30 days in, I think that's probably common to, to experience, or at least I've heard a lot of people mention a similar experience. And so yeah, I if you're unhappy with that and you're waking up and you're thinking, I want to go back to sleep, I've heard that eating, like if you can tolerate butter or ghee, eating like a tablespoon of fat um, before bed or going, if you wake up in the middle of the night um, and you want to go back to sleep, doing that. I've done that a couple of times and it has worked. So I also do self-hypnosis when I can't sleep. I have some just tracks that I have found on YouTube, but also ones that I've purchased from a, um, a clinical hypnotherapist. And they're just audios. I put in like an earbud or I'll put it really quiet next to my head and listen to that. And those get me to sleep like in 20 minutes or less. So that's, I don't know, is it placebo or does it work? I don't know, but it really relaxes you. Um, let's see. Um, Gramrit Singh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Hi, Nia. I'm doing carnivore, but salt bothers me, especially Himalayan salt. When I take more, I get skin problems, dry skin, but when I reduce it, I get fatigue, very confused what to do. I had kind of a similar experience with this balancing electrolytes. It can just be, it can be, it's just experimenting in the beginning. And I don't know how long you've been carnivore. But it took me, oh man, I would say, I mean, several months, if not four months, I would say to really dial in to how much salt I needed. Um, I know Dr. Chafee says just salt to taste, and that can be kind of hard in the beginning when you know, you're not fully adapted to the diet yet. I, I know I over salted in the beginning quite a bit because it tastes good and it makes everything taste better. And, um, but I would notice in my hands, they would get really swollen. My face would swell up, you know, a little bit. And I would just kind of feel like oh, I'm holding a lot of fluid. And so I knew from that, it's like, okay, I need to back off a little bit. And now I'd say I still salt my food, but, um, I, do much less. And I don't take an electrolyte supplement every day now. I maybe take one, take um, the bulk mix I showed you guys on my channel, how to make the copycat element. I have that sitting on my counter here and I have like a half of a, of a serving of that maybe twice a week now. Whenever I feel like I'm kind of getting to that, oh, I'm just, I got a little headache or I'm feeling fatigued or I've had more exercise or it's been hot and I've sweated more than normal that's when I kind of know to add some in. So again, with all this stuff, it's just kind of learning how your body responds to this. And all of us are going to be a little bit different, right? Depending on our, our um, health status, our background, if you're trying to lose weight or not, if you're exercising a lot or not, all these things matter. So you can also try a different salt. I know um, like somebody recommended 
think it's called French Celtic or gray, French gray salt or something like that, or Celtic sea salt. There's different salts too that you may just respond better to. So you can try those. Um, but good luck with that. Cause I know it's, it's frustrating when you're like, well, I'm, I'm doing what they say to do, but it's, you know, not quite working for me. So, um, and you, you could consider the, you know, I don't know if you're adding magnesium or potassium or anything else in with that, like taking a full electrolyte supplement that might help too. It could be more of a magnesium thing that you need. I know when I do take my supplement, um, the magnesium's in there too. And I feel like that really helps just relax me too. If I'm feeling tense. Thanks for that question. I hope you hope you get it figured out. Um, Carnivore Keith says, I'm native to New Zealand and my use my cultural heritage for grounding prayers and a more natural perspective in this life. Yes, I love that. I think, um, yeah, the, the spiritual element, the connection with nature, the connection with the higher power is such an important and critical element in healing. Um, we live in such a busy culture, such a stimulated culture. And I think stress reduction, oftentimes, like the best thing to do for that is to do things like what Carnivore Keith is saying right here is, you know, removing more of that stimulation if possible, the social media, the news, the constant, you know, notifications, the dinging, I leave my notifications off, like, so they don't even vibrate a lot of the time now, just because even hearing that that buzz, even if it's just like some stupid email that I don't care about, it's like, oh, I got to go check and see like who texted me or do I need to do something or did this person respond to me? And it's like, I don't even get YouTube notifications on my phone except for, I think I have, if, if I replied to someone and they replied back to me, that will, that will have, that will trigger a notification on my phone, but I don't get notifications like, every time I get a comment or every time something happens because I would be doing that all day and I'd be obsessed with that and it would be distracting me from what I am trying to do during the day, which is be a mom and, you know, also do some of these other things like um, filming videos and stuff. So yeah, going back to a lot of these things, grounding, prayer, and just removing some of the stimulus, I think that's definitely helped me. It sounds like it's helping you too, Keith. So that's great. Derek says, HIIT training is very good for achieving the, uh, to those weight loss goals. Um, Derby.com has hundreds of workouts that can be done anywhere. Yes. Um, high intensity interval training is great. It's kind of like, um, I know a lot of carnivores I've seen are doing like a sprinting challenge or doing some of that where it's these short bursts of intense effort. And you do that, um, you know, quite a bit less frequently. And it does sort of mimic what we would have done ancestrally, right? We would have probably done a lot of walking. We would have lifted heavy things. We would have been, um, you know, gathering and, in, in, you know, in those type of positions, moving around a lot. But then in times of threat or fear or hunting scenarios, we would have been sprinting. You know, we would have been going after something for a short time and then probably pausing to, you know, rest or reconfigure or whatever it was. And so it does make sense that that, would be something that our body responds well to. And we do have the, um, oh, drawing on my, uh, drawing back on my A&P studies. Um, I think it's the anaerobic energy system, right? That, that is used during that. So it's like the glucose that's stored in our, that's always stored in our muscles is used for stuff like that, like stuff like that. That's why it runs out really fast. You can only do it for a short amount of time until your body can replenish those those glucose stores in the muscle tissue. So yes, I don't do any of that right now just because I was, um, I got to a point where I just felt like I broke, like my body could not handle any intensity whatsoever. And I would just be so completely devastatingly tired if I would even do, um, we were doing like these 15 or 20 minute just cardio workouts, like jump roping in place and jumping jacks and some push-ups and stuff. And I would just be destroyed after that. And so I'm really focusing on um, sort of like the, the yoga stuff lately. I've been doing some Pilates, which is really great. But eventually, yes, I want to get back into doing that too, because 
I think it's good for it's good for your cardiovascular system. It's good all around, and it does uh, help you with weight loss as well. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. I'll check out those videos. Yeah, I think um, yeah, it's just good to hear different perspectives on that. I have some people in my comments about the fruit thing. Um, you know, it it just depends on a lot. Um, oh, Stephanie. Hey, I know you. <laughs> Miss you guys too. Thanks. I I always liked doing my hair and so I've gotten back into that a little bit. And hopefully it'll fade. I didn't mean to go this dark, but it happened. And then um this is what I was going for, like a really light tinted color. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Anna says, um, dedicated to transforming my health for about 18 months now started with sobriety and six months strict carnivore now still animal based, but with eating plants seasonally. That's awesome. Yeah. I quit drinking alcohol too. this. I think it was like, when did I start this year? The end of July, I think. And, um, that's hard because it's, I think my first round of carnivore, that's probably cause I was still drinking alcohol. I felt really good, but I think the more I've thought about it, that was probably what was causing me to want to binge on sugar a lot of the time. Because in my healing journey, I think I touched on this, how I would, um, like every six weeks, I would end up having like some kind of sugar binge. And it was stress related, but I think having that alcohol in there, even though I was only drinking um, like vodka soda with no sugar in it, but it's still, um, it's the sugar alcohol still affects you. And so I think it affected my cravings, I guess is what I'm saying. So that's amazing that you did that first because, um, I think it's at least from what I've heard too, people find it much easier after they've been carnivore to let go of some of that stuff. And I think a lot of the reason for that is because you lose the craving for sugar and you lose, you know, the, um, that really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just intense craving for junk food and sugar and all these other things that you may have been consuming before. And so with the lessening of those cravings, the craving for alcohol goes away too. So that's awesome. And it's very cool that you can incorporate some um, plants here and there. I would love to have, I love like pickles and olives where I think olives are something that, that don't really bother me, but there again, if I eat some right now, then I just want to like have a little bit of this too and have a little bit, bit of that too. And that's kind of where Christmas got out of control for me because I had a couple things that I thought, oh, olives are fine. But then it was just like ugh, that dang trigger again. So um, that's very cool. And I think a lot of us would like to be there where, you know, we can tolerate a few other things here and there sometimes. So congratulations. That's very cool. Um, Carrie L says, this is a video on the carnivore doctor's channel about your eyes under the live section. Oh yes. I think, um, is it the one where the thumbnail is like her and she's super tan out on the beach and it's vitamin D something about cancer and vitamin D. And then in there she talked about, um, sunglasses and how, you know, but sunglasses are so cool. I like to wear sunglasses, <laughs> but they have a lot of them that are very like that are not very dark. And so maybe we can still be fashionable and still have <laughs> good eyes. Well, and I've always thought because I have very light eyes that that was some of the reason why my eyes were more sensitive. At least somebody told me that a long time ago, where perhaps people with brown eyes are a little bit more able to tolerate it. So I don't know if there's any truth to that. Maybe we should ask her. Um, carnival doctor. Let's see. Melissa says, when trying to lose weight, should I choose leaner meats? Ugh, I'm so confused. Um, okay. So again, I'm, I'm not a weight loss specialist, but I've watched tons of other people talk about this and there's lots of, um, there's a few different perspectives. I think the what I would say if I had to summarize it, the consensus that I hear the most is no, that you should definitely if you're transitioning to this diet off of standard American or off of um, even keto, that you should eat as much fatty meat as you can and eat as much fat as your body can tolerate, because that's going to help your body 
understand that this is what we're running off now. We're running off fat and that's what you want to burn for energy. And so I'm doing that experiment this month, actually, not again from a weight loss perspective, but I'm trying to up my fats to see if I can like really feel that, that, that carnivore, that zero carb Zen that everybody talks about, that feeling of being in ketosis, because I feel like that's how you know when your body's truly fat adapted. And then if you incorporated some intermittent fasting, like went to TUMAD or OMAD or something like that, then in that intermittent fasting time, you would be burning your own stored body fat for fuel. And so I think the danger in choosing leaner meats, especially for us ladies, is that it, it, again, it seems to me from everything I've heard other people say that fats are so incredibly important for hormone balancing, for healing, for being in ketosis, for all this kind of stuff that um, fat is not going to make you fat, essentially is what I'm trying to say, just by itself. Eating, you know, 8 million calories a day of fat might make you gain weight. So there's that balance. And that's what I'm experimenting with this month is to try to get my fats to like 85% and keep my protein relatively low at, you know, uh, 15 to 20% and then see how I do. And I'll tell you right now, it's only been four days and I've been tracking on my fitness um, pal to, you know, see where I'm at approximately. And I feel like I've already maybe dropped a couple of pounds just based on how I look. And I don't think that's water weight just because, I mean, it could be a little bit, but, um, or a little bit of bloating, but, um, yeah, I would, if I had to give just completely non-medical generic advice, I would say go, go high fat if you can. And then, um, see, you know, do that for 60 days and then you can kind of tweak your meal times, your window, if that's, you know, something that you can do. I eat three meals a day right now and I'm, I'm good there, but, um, I think the window is important, uh, more of an important factor, at least from I've, what I've seen than the, than doing lean. So sorry if that was a little scrambled, but that's what I would say. <laughs> um, Anna says, uh, two, since adding the circadian light, uh, sorry, since adding the circadian and light environment aspect of health includes taking into consideration the light we get from food. Interesting. Yeah. And I think I saw a comment from you about, um, oh, she used to be carnivore yogi. And uh, is it Sarah? Yeah, Sarah Kleiner. I saw her interview on Dr. Chafee's podcast where she talks more about um, the, like the bioenergetic light. I, I think that's what you're referring to. I don't know a ton about that. But um, that would, yeah, that would be something I would look more into. But I am subscribed to her channel and I've seen a couple of her videos about it. Thank you for that. Susanna Taylor, a lot of blue light from cell phones, laptops, tablets affects sleep. Amen. Yes, doesn't it? I, um, on my laptop now, I have, there's a setting where you can turn off the blue light or turn on the, the nighttime vision or whatever. And so I always keep that on. But the phones, yeah, I'm guilty of that sometimes where I'm on it too late. But I would say um, something I have tried to do lately is to really reduce the like the overhead lights I will try to just run on candles or in my bathroom now I have one of those little wax warmer things that plugs into the, your outlet with a little light and it it really is almost just like a candle light um what's the word lumen like number of lumens or whatever and so I turn that on in the evening so whenever we go into the bathroom we're not turning on this extremely bright light and kind of like shocking your system and then turning it back off and it's dark so um Tr yeah, trying to set up your environment as much as possible to uh, wind down in the evenings, not be overstimulated is definitely important. United Carnivore. Carnivores unite! Woo! Let's do it. Um, let's see. Got any questions? Banjo Brat, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Darth Carnivore is here. Good morning. Jay's in here. Good morning. 
Um, Adam X says, hello, I've been carnivore for four years. Are you all concerned at all concerned with colon cancer on a meat diet? They blame red meat for it, but I don't believe it's true. Any thoughts? Um, I'm not concerned about it. I, um, my, <laughs> if we want to talk about, uh, colons, mine was extremely unhappy and irritated and cramping and constantly in pain for, you know, the decade or so that I, ate a bunch of fiber and plant material and drank a bunch of alcohol and coffee and Red Bulls and had a, you know, sort of a, I wouldn't say stressful job, but a job that put me in a lot of uncomfortable situations, like just forced me to be more extroverted than maybe I naturally am. So all those things um, made me feel really bad. And I feel fantastic on carnivore. You know, it's all these, all these types of things. Um, you have to look at those those research papers and see um, what a lot of times, again, they get turned into these headlines that says like this causes that when we know you cannot like even a, a strong correlation cannot prove causation. We are multivariate beings. There are we all have different environmental things we have. And then the meat, when they say in those types of studies, they consider what they consider meat is not a carnivore diet. It's a standard American diet for the most part, that just includes meat. So a McDonald's hamburger with the bread, the lettuce, the ketchup, the seed oil, mayo, the fries, fried in industrial waste products that were turned into fryer oil, um, all that stuff is included too, versus someone who didn't eat, you know, the meat. And so it's, those studies are just not worth their weight, in my opinion. And I think most of the, you know, you can go to any of the doc carnivore doctors channels and all of them will talk about that specifically. Again, it's not that we can't trust any science or we can't learn anything from these studies. But when you get to something where you see a headline like red meat causes colon cancer, that's just false, you know, because we can't know that. We just can't. There's too many other things involved. And oftentimes the research isn't done to properly control for what they're actually experimenting with. And that might have to do with funding. That might have to do with industry involvement. That might have to do with, you know, different universities and, and pulling for the things that they want to produce. This hasn't, you know, um, corporations that want to sell you their products. Like all these influences are happening behind the scenes for this type of research. And so that's not my, that's not where I go first to try to find you know, what to do, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't that way, but um, it it is, unfortunately. Let's see. Michael Shu says, are you having energy problems transitioning to carnivore? Sorry, I missed the context. And hi. Hello. I did in the beginning. I struggled with energy quite a bit. And that is what I, that's why I went lion for January, because I thought, um, I assumed it was the caffeine, which I think was a big deal for me. I, so I cut the coffee. I slowly transitioned for context down from my highly high consumption of caffeine down to like 80 to 90 percent decaf. And then I cut coffee completely for January. And that helped a lot. I think that was kicking my adrenals in the butt to be honest, and in some way interfering with my ability to adapt. And I also think my fats weren't high enough. I know everybody says that, but I, my gut couldn't tolerate eating a bunch of fat. And I was trying to do, again, too many things at once. I was trying to like intermittent fast. So cutting my eating window down. So eating a, a much larger quantity of food in a short time, which made me very fatigued, gave me digestive problems. And that took me about three months, my first three months to figure that out. And then from like month three, four and five, I pl was playing around with electrolytes and trying to figure out my salt balance. And then I realized, hey, I think it's better for me to just eat smaller amounts more frequently. And this is something Dr. Bright talks about too, who I've been digging back into her stuff lately. She talks about, um, you know, she sort of calls herself the anti-faster and that, you know, especially in the case of, of ladies, but I think for, you know, both sexes, it's probably similar. Like um, when you're transitioning or if you're struggling with something like this, try eating three small meals. So what I'm doing right now, and I'll be reporting back for, you know, probably a couple, every two weeks, maybe this month, 
Um, I'm doing about five ounces of cooked protein per meal and about two tablespoons of tallow. So the last four days I've been eating, um, I weigh it after it's cooked just because I feel like it's an easier visual for me. Um, yeah, about four to five ounces of of protein, like cooked hamburger. I've been making brisket burgers from brisket that I ground, which are so good. And then about two tablespoons of tallow, um, two to three times a day. And depending on how hungry I am, and I feel like that's working really good and I'm starting to feel more energy. So again, it's sort of trial and error. And um, I think stimulants to sum that up, stimulants uh, affect your energy in a negative way if you're consuming a lot of them. Um, and then meal windows and the, the amount of food that you're eating in one sitting, and then how long you've been on the diet to be able to adapt so your body can actually absorb the fat that you're eating. And Dr. Chafee talks about this where, and Dr. Berry too, where, um, sorry, we're getting some sun in here. Put it down, it's smudge. Um, where some people need to take ox bile or something like that just to help your body, help your gallbladder remember how to do its its function, right, of um, excreting the right amount of bile, and then that's reabsorbed in your large intestine, small intestine, I forget which one it is, um, so that it's actually, your body's actually breaking it down. Now it's too dark. Man, I need like some different curtains or something. Um, you know what I mean? So there's all these little things to experiment with. Um, so I hope that helps. And I know I feel your pain if you're struggling with energy because um, it sucks. Carnivore Keith, question. I see you have a weekly newsletter. Yay, goal setting workbook and journal pack. Can you talk about a little on this? Thanks. Yes, and I normally um, talk about this in the beginning, but I just got excited and jumped right in. But I, yeah, I just launched a weekly newsletter and my goal for that is to just, cause I know not everybody can make this live stream and I wanna make like this conversation um, just more, just get more input from from all you guys. And um, I think it's important to have an off platform way to communicate because at the end of the day, we don't control these platforms. And I know, I don't know why this happened, but I noticed, um, oh, his, he just re-upped his channel now, Carnivore Teacher. I guess his channel got deleted. I saw this on Carnivore Soldier's uh, channel. And so he was like, go to this guy's channel and resubscribe because his channel got deleted. So, you know, I don't know if it was because of what he was saying in his videos or if it was just a fluke or he got hacked or something, but um, I definitely want to start building an off-platform way to communicate with with all of you guys. So that's how I'm doing it with a weekly newsletter. Um, and yes, there's a link in the description right now where I'm offering my um, 2024 goal setting workbook for free if you just sign up for that newsletter. And then um, the journal pack is a just another download that you can purchase and it's 10 bucks and it just goes along with each of these weekly live streams so there's a section for a brain dump in the beginning where you can kind of like dump all your thoughts you can do that any time of the week or right before like i usually do one right before i start just kind of like get everything out and then there's a couple sheets to take notes throughout the live stream or if you want to have questions that you want to write down um, you can do that there. And then at the end of the live stream each week, I offer journal prompts. So there's a place in there to reflect on the points from the journal prompts. And I have three for you guys today at the end, which we're already coming up on the hour. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yes, there's links for everything below. And I appreciate um, if anybody wants to sign up for that. And um, yeah, the goal setting workbook goes along with a, a live stream we had which will be on the live stream playlist. I think it's called um, How to Stay Motivated and Consistent. That's where we talked about that. And then I was like, oh, I should make something to go with this. So that's where that came from. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, where am I? And it says cardio and hit can be too much stress for just, yeah, that's how I was feeling. And so like, I definitely, agree with like the benefits of of interval training sprinting doing stuff like that even heavy lifting and weight training i used to weight train and i really enjoyed it um i was never super big into cardio but um i would try to do running and jogging i love i loved to hike and do you know rugged trails out in the 
in the bush and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't tolerate it anymore. <laughs> and I felt so bad, but it's like, this is what my body's telling me. So yes. And eventually once, once I heal, I know that, um, that'll be something good for me to incorporate again. Jay says, does anyone have an iodine supplement they recommend? Yes, I do. Hold on. This is the, this is the one Dr. Barry recommends. It's J. Crow's Lugal's 2%. You can get it on Amazon and you put like three drops like, boop, 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 into a beverage. I was putting it in um, coffee um, for probably most of December, I think is when I started supplementing. And then when I cut coffee, I stopped taking this and I thought maybe that's why I had cravings for seafood. I don't know. But that's the one Dr. Barry recommends. So that's what I got. And you can taste it a little bit, but get used to it. It's not too bad. Um, and it's not very expensive either. I think this was 12 bucks or something. Jack Flash, carnivore for two years or more, lost the craving for sugar, but have an occasional craving for salty and crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um that's what bacon did for me. It was like that salty, crispy. You could crumble it up and put it on stuff. And I don't eat bacon anymore, at least for right now. So that's a bummer. But yeah, salty, crunchy for sure. Turbine says fermented foods, one of the most overlooked factor in this lifestyle. Um, I see, I've seen some comments talking about people that do sauerkraut or some kind of fermented vegetables. We keep kimchi in the house. I love sauerkraut. I love the taste. I love kimchi, but it just may, it blows my gut out to smithereens every time I even look at sauerkraut. So, you know, maybe I'm just, my gut's more messed up than the average, you know, cave woman. But I think, you know, there's definitely, again, like kind of two camps where you see people that um, do the probiotics or some of the raw dairy for gut healing and stuff. And then other people who just like cannot tolerate it at all. So definitely experiment, see if you can do that. Cause I don't necessarily think those are bad at all. Those, you know, that would be more along the lines of a proper way to eat those foods, right? Fermented, which is what's going to, um, you know, disable for lack of a better word, some of the plants anti-nutrients and make the nutrition that is in those plants more bioavailable. And I feel like that's probably why most cultures have some sort of um, predominant fermented food product that they, you know, have made for centuries, right? Probably because it does something good or at least makes that food more bioavailable for us. Um, Francis Bueller says, no, fat does not make you fat. Watch Dr. Barry Vids, right? And it's, and, you know, that's such a, that's so hard to break out of. And so I feel, I, I understand why that is, is someone's inclination because that is what has been drilled into our head. Again, especially as ladies, like don't touch that fat, right? Fat free everything, because that's what we were taught, right? That's what was put out there. It's like, you need to eat the reduced fat, fat free everything. So yeah, unlearning that stuff and learning that fat is like our best friend in many cases is amazing because it's delicious. Um, okay, we're gonna go like two minutes and then I'm going to uh, jump into the journal prompts because I do have to go at 11. Always be yourself says if meat causes cancer, our ancestors would have died and we wouldn't be here today. You know, that's, that's true. That's along the same lines as how I think about it. And, you know, there's arguments like, well, we only lived till we were 40. So what did it matter? And, and t this type of stuff. And we had crazy hard lifestyles, but, um, you know, I just, I don't think that, yeah, if we were chronically sick, with it, it just doesn't make common sense to think that the food that we've been eating for like predominantly for the vast majority of our existence on this planet is what would cause us chronic debilitating illness. It's like you can you can look at any chart and see that industrialized food and processed food and all these new drugs coming onto the market, and all these stimulants coming to the market and these chemicals and toxins in our environment 
all that stuff is correlated with illness and chronic disease. And so, yeah, you can't single out one individual thing and say, yep, that's the culprit, you know, and it, it just doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Um, okay. Let's see. I do better when I eat two meals, breakfast and late lunch. It says, um, yep. Lugol's iodine. Yeah. Great comments. You guys, let's see. Yeah. Life and DIY says, um, uh, I, w I never know how to pronounce his name. Dr. Seaways. Seaways. Um, I'm subscribed to his channel and I know he says his name, but I'm like, for some reason, I always stumble on it. Um, he's talked about this a lot. If carnivore, your gut will not be acclimated to anything other than meat. Um, and it just takes some time and adding in a super small amount. Oh, you mean as far as like introducing plants or maybe the fermented foods or something like that? Yeah, I... Um, I tried a lot of probiotics, if, if that's what you're referring to, and probiotic foods when I was like more plant-based and paleo and, and stuff like that. And man, they just, I don't know, maybe someday because I love that stuff. But um, okay, I think there's one more question. Linda says, do you recommend or stay away from pork rinds and panko? I am right now. I'm cutting out, I cut out pork and chicken for, for lion diet. And I'm going to continue doing that just because I'm not hundred percent sure if those are the best foods for me right now. I have a feeling that they're probably not. Um, so I'm just, I'm trying to stick to for this month, ruminant meat. So beef. And then if I'm craving seafood, I'm going to, I'm going to allow some of that, like try some shrimp. I had like four ounces of shrimp yesterday with my, with my beef and tallow and it was delicious. I had, uh, oysters on the 31st and, and snow crabs and stuff, but I'm also adding back in this iodine supplement to decaf just cause it's the easiest way to take it. And so, um, we'll see, maybe I will lose those cravings. I don't know, but I think again, you can experiment with that. You could just cut out pork, for 30 days if you're already adapted and then see how it makes you feel. Um, so I just got some some pork and good panko crumbs though to make some stuff for my little one because she seems totally fine with the pork. So I'm gonna try some new recipes with that. Okay, um, thank you everyone for your input today. We didn't even have to go to the poll because, which there's good, um, good comments in here too. And so if you haven't seen the poll of the week, maybe go check out those comments too. But um, let's get to the journal prompts today. And then like um, our carnivore friend from Carnivore Keith mentioned <laughs> for me, I have links in the description if you want to help support my work and get something to follow along with these weekly live streams. We're on week six um, of 2024. That is in the description. And then you can get my goal setting workbook free to download if you subscribe to my email list. Um, and so these are the journal prompts for this week. So we talked about other lifestyle factors. Well, we kind of did. We kind of got into more questions and stuff too, which is totally fine. But um, to reflect on the topic for the week, number one, what's the number one lifestyle change besides diet that has helped you the most? For me, I wrote down, it was a tie between stress reduction and getting in the sun. Because kind of like I mentioned in the beginning, those went hand in hand. I got more sun and I was like, oh, this is so relaxing. I need more relaxation. That's what my body wants. Number two, what is the next lifestyle factor that you know you need to work on and why? So the next thing that you think you could improve on or add into your, your um, daily routine, your health routine. And number three, little visualization exercise. So for a moment, can you visualize the person or the version of you who has integrated all of these lifestyle factors in a positive way? What does that person's routine look like? What are they doing every day? What are they thinking about? What are they prioritizing? Just take a little time to just visualize the healthiest version of yourself. What does that person's lifestyle look like? And like we learned from some uh, Linda, I believe in the very beginning, um, you can speak that stuff out loud 
If you are um, religious, you can use scripture. If you're more of an affirmations person, you can do those out loud. Speaking out loud what you desire, speaking out loud what you want to see more of, speaking out loud th the truth, um, which I believe, sorry, the truth is that, you know, we are all healthy at some level, but all this stuff in life has, you know, buried that away. And so becoming who you are, becoming the healthiest version of yourself, becoming the most, um, you know, the person that loves life, that who has the most passion, who has the most impact positively in other people's lives, that version of you is in there already. And it's up to you to adjust your life and let go of things and bring other things in and keep trying and keep iterating and keep learning and growing in order to remove all that junk and all those layers and reveal that person. And so that's the journey that we're all on. That's what I'm here kind of documenting and, and talking about with you guys. And I appreciate each and every one of you, all your support and your comments and your um, vulnerability, sharing your stories and helping each other. And so I thank you all again. And I hope you have a fantastic week. And my newsletter, my goal is to get it out on Tuesdays, which will have the topic of the week um, and a link to the vote to vote in the poll. So I'm going to try to get all that together on Tuesday. So we have plenty of time to kind of get ready for the following Sunday. So thanks, everybody for being here. Have a fantastic week. Keep eating that meat. Get some sun, reduce your stress. Read more books. Stop looking at your phone at night. Okay, bye. <laughs>